Hey guys, I'm Jerry Mitchellock. I have Austin here. He's got his X10 training system. He's the technical guy. I'm the fun guy. So I'm going to do the show and tell. He's going to give you the download on actually how to use this equipment correctly. So Austin, show me what you got here. Okay. Well, first of all, I'm not a tech guy. People much smarter than I am uh, are really the brains behind this. But this is a high-tech piece of gear that's designed to help shooters at every single level improve. So this is the X10 right here. It's a small but powerful computing device, basically a motion tracking sensor that attaches to your gun. So you can attach it to the pick rail, right. or you can attach it, we have a, an adapter to attach it to the magazine. If you don't have a holster that accommodates uh, a light, it, it will fit in any light bearing holster if you want it to. But here's what it does. So it connects uh, to an application on your smartphone or tablet, and while you're shooting, it tracks and analyzes the movement patterns. When you take a shot, it saves and analyzes the data surrounding that shot. And then it analyzes and tells you how you can improve your shot based off of the mechanics and the movement patterns that it sees. Uh, in this situation, we're gonna have Jerry run through a few different drills, and we're gonna see what your sh shooting proficiency is like, see what okay. this tells you as a competitive shooter, what kind of things you might be able to distill from the data they may not be able to pick up just from your eyes or from anecdotal experience. So how many reps are we gonna do? Uh, we're gonna go till you get tired. So we're starting with the, <laughs> do some holster draw drills <laughs> okay, and uh, see what we can glean from the data. Cool. So I'm gonna show you an empty gun. I'm flagged, I have an empty chamber. You notice I have no magazines on me at all, and the only magazine I do have is this one, and it's totally empty. So that's one thing you want to do is purge yourself of any ammunition. Uh, safety first. Safety first. Okay, so we draw from the holster. You want me to draw from the holster a few reps? Yeah, so what, what this does, like we said before, is it's tracking movement throughout the entire shot process. The holster right. draw analysis is a little bit different because it breaks it up into different phases of your shot. Uh, so typical holster draw analysis is, is, is buzzer uh, to shot. This okay. is no different but we do a lot of data analysis in the middle. So it's not a detective when it's in the holster, it tells you to stand by and then, there you go. Now reholster that, get ready for the next shot. That was a really bad trigger pull. Stand by. Do a couple more. All right. Yeah, we're getting pretty sloppy here, so we'll have to clean it up Stand a little by. bit. Do one more. All right. All right. So let's stop that drill and look at the data. So what we're looking at is <clears throat> the entire shot process, and we break it down from a holster draw analysis into five different phases. So rather than just a, an overall split time from mm -hmm. the buzzer to the shot, what we're doing is analyzing how long did it take you to actually, from the buzzer to grip the gun. Okay. How long did it take you to pull it out? How long did it take you to get it horizontal? How long did it take you to get it on target? And how long did it take you to actually take the shot after it's on target? So you can look cool. and see where you're consistent or inconsistent in the data and where you need to focus on different things. So we can see, for instance, in the grip, your response, your average response to the buzzer is about 0.26 seconds. So from the time the buzzer goes off until you touch the gun, it's about well, a quarter of a second. Quarter of a second, yep. Okay, you got a couple that were about a third of a second. Mm -hmm. uh, you're, you're quick pulling it out, basically instantaneously. Now to get it horizontally, when your early shots took a little bit longer to get it pulled out uh, or positioned horizontally, mm -hmm. the last shot you took took a lot longer to get it actually on the target. Maybe you're fishing for your red dot a little yeah, bit. Yeah, it was a little, little bit off. Yeah, I was, yep. Okay. I was throwing some subtle changes in there and see what this thing was going to... Okay, well, we'll look, yeah. at the, we'll look at the trace yeah. data in a minute to see what yep. it says. Yep. Uh, and then we look at the actual time once you're on target, how long until you take the shot. Now, mm -hmm. you're obviously still locking in your mm -hmm. your, your target acquisition, um, but about 0.3 seconds to lock in on your shot. Your average split time was... Uh, you had a couple uh, right around a second, mm -hmm. but your average is about 1.13 seconds from buzzer to shot. The buzzer to shot, yep. How do you feel about... What's your normal... I would say that, yep, yeah, just stepping in cold. Okay. I haven't done any warm-up. And that's something uh, which really trick about this. I see this already. Uh, I have cold and you have hot times. If I, if I did 50 reps and you said, that, let's do five draws, they're going to be a lot quicker than that. Right. But this is actually your match performance. When you're cold and you, you haven't had a lot of time to handle your equipment, you're on the line and they say, Jerry, give me a, give me a shot. I got to hit a target at 30 yards or whatever. That's going to be more realistic. I call that cold time performance. If you gave me enough reps, I'd be, I would be in the point sevens, point okay. eights. But this is what I'm looking for as a competitor: is the consistency of what I'm doing from the very start to the very time the shot fires. 
So when you get on the line, you can be consistent and you know the feel and what the pace is going to be. And that's what it's showing me right here. Exactly. Great. So the other thing you can look at in addition to the split times is the actual muzzle trace as you're drawing mm -hmm. out of the holster. Now it's using based off of angles. And so it's going to look a little bit different than what you might expect, but you're looking for consistency, looking for outliers and then in anything interesting in the data that can point to some other deficiency perhaps. So I, I know you mentioned on a couple mm -hmm. that you felt like maybe the trigger control wasn't as good. And we can see that um, with this trace right here, uh, the fourth shot is where it looks like at the very end, you pulled it down a little bit, yep. right? Where the other yep. ones, it's yep. a much tighter loop at the end. Mm -hmm. That means you weren't yanking mm -hmm. the gun around while you're pulling right. the trigger at the last little bit. Here's another interesting shot, uh, shot seven. It looks like when you're drawing it out, you pulled it out a little bit. Which maybe there was some, you know. Yeah, I was playing there. I wanted to put a little bit of wing into it. Okay, you're yeah, a little to, bit on to that see one. what what the what the diagram showed. There you go. So there's the wing, and then you can see the recovery from that wing yeah. because you had to pull it back yep. on target. Yeah. Um, obviously, mm. the the goal being consistency, right? If, right. Well, right. efficiency and consistency. The straighter the lines, and the more consistent they are together, right. then the more proficient you are. So this actual loop at the end sh is showing that I'm coming in high on a target or low, and then I'm finalizing a shot with that with that very end of the presentation there that's in red yep so the very end of the presentation is the last little bit right before the trigger pull right so it means that yeah you're, you're, you're dipping the gun just a little bit yeah or you're coming in high or coming in low exactly right and that's that's something we work for like at steel challenge where your first shot is so critical you have to be spot on and what's working out of the host the whole idea is you're coming into the target with the least, uh, the least amount of disturbance so you can once it stops you you're making a shot so this wide swing is something I induced into it to see if it was going to pick it up. And that's something we always try to do is a straight line to the target. And you, everybody has a tendency to do things they don't see. Like I call it cowboy and you come in high muzzle yeah. or low muzzle and then you whip it right at the end. And that builds up a lot of inconsistencies. So it, it actually shows that very precisely uh, without even firing a shot. There you go. That's pretty cool. You just saved yourself 20 bucks in ammo. Well, right? more than that. <laughs> <laughs> That's about three shots right now. Yeah, no kidding. No yep. kidding. You know, Austin, what, <laughs> as, a, as a perception of being a professional, I don't like to be showed anything negative. And this has actually <laughs> given me a concept of what I, I, I already knew that I hadn't practiced much this year with the matches and COVID and ammunition shortages. It shows that I'm rough on the trigger, which is always the downfall of a handgun shooter. It's trigger control, uh, it's more important than side alignment. And what I really like about it, it showed exactly where I was weak. So if I can go out and just do a bunch of dry fire on a big target, I really didn't learn much. This way you can isolate down to the very minute part of what the problem is. And that's what separates really the top shooters from those who compete locally, is the ability to execute very good shots under stress. And that showed right there, I'm, I'm not patient. I haven't shot in a while. I'm not good on the trigger. Things to work on. So it's just uh, it's an eye opener for me, and uh, I can I can come in here and train and get aggravated and throw this thing across the room, <laughs> and then come back and train some more. So that's what it's all about: knowing where you're weak and know what to train at, and not what you're comfortable with. Got to get out of your comfort zone and see actually where you are. So that's what I've done today. All right. Hey guys, Mantis has stepped up to the plate and they want to give away an X10 free. All you have to do is go down below and give us a description of what you use your Mantis for and how you train and you'll get your name in a hat. Might get you one.